Hola, gringas y gringos, and welcome to Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. I'm Mark. I'm Gina. This week, we're going to answer the question that we got. What is the Chaco story? Coming up next. I'm a chocoholic. He is not. No, to me, chocolate <laughs> is a Snickers bar. That's about as far as but I go. But don't you want to know where that chocolate comes from? Yeah. The M&M Mars Company out of New Jersey. That's as much as oh, I need to know. I mean... Choco's story, as I just learned, is actually an international franchise. I found one in Beirut. I found one in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Now, they are very different, and of course, they're very focused on their regional history of chocolate. We went to one of three Chaco stories in Mexico. We went to the one in Uxmal. You will also find one in Playa del Carmen, and you'll find one in Valladolid. But and I, we literally kept walking right by the yes. one in Valladolid because it was right across from the food outside food court right there across from the square. So it's very simple. But I think the biggest advantage is that this one is outside, it's an animal refuge as well, mm -hmm. and you get a more authentic feel because they actually have labeled all the plants that allow you to do see what the plants are and where the cocoa comes from and everything else. So we're going to let you take a peek at it and then we'll talk about it when we get back. Chaco story. They have an area for the children where they can pretend to be archaeologists with a little shovel and a brush and they can dig up things that are buried in the sand. Zabila, aloe vera, just growing in the wild out here. People pay a fortune to grow this in their house.
with an arrow? That's what the guy was saying. Trying really hard. If you want, you can try natural with nothing. And the table, you can add sugar, cinnamon, or the traditional style with chili. The chili makes the drink less bitter, but you must be careful because it's habanero chili. So it's Ooh. spicy. <laughs> Gracias. Oh, it smells okay. so good. Yeah, it smells like mm. chocolate. We have two of them. Mm. Now, this is like chocolate, but this is completely different. Like the chocolate. Achiote? It's a colorant. It's just for color. Just yeah. for color? Yeah. 
But it's good for cochinita for being. <laughs> okay, well, we give them the red color and the cochinita, but the <laughs> flavor is for the orange. Oh, the orange. Okay, see. And then cinnamon, allspice. Okay. Some in there. And then. And what's the allspice do? Allspice is like a Mexican pepper, but it's only for that one. It doesn't have many flavors. No? Yeah, but it smells very, very good. Okay. Oh, it does smell good. Mmm, it's a little bit. I don't want to do a lot. Okay. So I have allspice, chili, sugar. Oh man, that's good stuff. Once the drying finish, we roast the seeds for about 20 to 30 minutes or remove the skin. The second one are the roasted seeds. Acá se van a moler hasta ir formando lo que es una pasta. Oh. After we take the roasted seed and put it in the metate for drying until get a paste. The paste is because each bean is conformed by 50% of fat. The Mayas know about this fat and extract it by cooking. When they cook in the paste in hot water for many time, all the fat separate floating and remote, and when the fat be cool, they make the cocoa powder. Cocoa powder. And this is the cocoa powder. The Mayas using the cocoa powder for lesions from injuries. Some people mix the cocoa powder with achiote, that is a natural colorant, and use it like a makeup. Today, the cocoa powder is used for made the white chocolate and also for the scratch marks. Mm -hmm. For the Mayas, produce the foam into the drink was very important because the foam is like offering for the goods. For this, they use three different methods. The first one is by blowing, they use in vessel like this, they put the drink inside, and by this part they blow for produce the foam. Welcome back. Yes, we got a few questions about the Chaco story. So I decided that maybe I should put that one out. So this particular location is like five minutes outside of Uxmal Archaeological Zone. And we almost missed it. it well, no, some of, us, some of us had an idea <laughs> and, and the GPS kept going. Go up here, and I'm like, uh-uh. We drove about a hundred yards. I went, no. It, I mean, it's you come out of Ushmal, and it is literally across the highway. It right is right there. It is, and it's kind of recessed behind some trees. You don't see it. No. And we ended up parking in, I think, a hotel parking lot. And yeah, walking and, it, and, to and, it. and it wasn't like they were that busy, yeah. so it wasn't a problem. But actually, the parking is off to the right and we ended up if we followed the signs and it said parking well yeah ah. yeah 
Now, I think this particular location is for more of that authentic Mayan history type feel. Mm -hmm. It's also an animal refuge, absolutely not a zoo. Every animal that was in there was in there for some sort of reason that would prevent them from being able to survive on their own in the wild. Yeah, because they had that one jaguar that had mm -hmm. been shot by an arrow in, in one of its hind legs, and, mm -hmm. and you could tell it liked to walk, but it looked like me after you know, half a bottle of Grey Goose. It was, it was, it was a little gimpy. To say the least. A little, a poor yeah. thing, poor thing. Um, but what I really wanted to experience here was the ability to not only see what would have been, I guess, their idea of a traditional Mayan ceremony, basically giving thanks to the gods for the cocoa, the cacao. Yep, and, and, and giving thanks to the tourists for putting the money there. It's true. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it, it was a little campy, but it was interesting and fun to watch. I mean... Yeah. And it wasn't real long. I think no. it was like 10 minutes. Uh, that, yeah, because the whole event really doesn't take you more than about 35 to 45 minutes to... Yeah, it's like an hour. You're there for yeah. an hour, and that's if you take your time. Mm -hmm. Lots of plants to look at in their mm -hmm. natural habitat. It was interesting to see the henny king, which is sisal. And sisal is basically what they called it green gold in this region. This is what made this region as rich as it was way back then. So we get to watch the ceremony, and then this is the great, big, exciting moment that he did not partake in. The tasting of original hot cocoa. I was already hot. I didn't need any more heat. Mm. Oh, guys, even with nothing in it, with nothing in it at all, just the cocoa paste and hot water, it was absolutely delicious. It didn't even need a sweetener. It had a very slight bitter taste, very creamy. Found out why it was so creamy. If the government of Mexico found out they would be putting a sticker on each cup that went out for excessive fats because it is got the actual cocoa butter in it, yeah. which is only 50% fat. It is 50% cocoa butter. And that's why it was so creamy and so good. Like people traditionally will have hot cocoa with milk in it to make it creamy. You didn't need to. <laughs> This was just cocoa and water. It was that good. And then, of course, they had the seasonings up in the front, and you could put some chili if you wanted to in it and, or some sugar, whatever you wanted. They did a nice demonstration of how they clean it, roast it, mm -hmm. grind it, prepare it, the tools that they used. And, and the young man was doing a very good job of mm -hmm doing it in both Spanish and English because there was a mix of people in there. So he was bouncing back and forth yeah. doing the two. Um, you know, and they, they taught us a little bit of Mayan too, which I expect. But the signs were Mayan, Spanish, English, and Francais. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that appeals to the French, the Belgian, and the Swiss. Gee. The three, the three biggest consumers by <laughs> population of chocolate yeah. are the Swiss, the Belgian, and the French. And it was really interesting because they had several palapa type uh, exhibit rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the rooms showed you basically the cultivation of the chocolate or the cacao. Another one would, uh, I think there was one that showed how they prepared it, washed it, fermented it. Another was a traditional Mayan home. But like the last couple of rooms were, one was the influence of Europeans. Well, finding I, I, the chocolate. I think it was more of what the Europeans did yes. with the Mexican chocolate. Yes. I mean, that was, you know. And, and how they went and actually did a few things and took it to a different level as far as the the percentage of chocolates and, and you know the cacao and how 
that mm -hmm. made an effect and how mm -hmm. they graded it and all of that. The last room was basically advancements in the uh, industry in making candy. Yep. So it was really, I think overall, very interesting if you like chocolate. Yeah. Don't get too comfortable around the monkey cages because they got some <laughs> spider monkeys there and they're on two sides and there's a bridge over the top that they, when they were feeding one side, the other side was not happy because they were not involved in this and they were running back and forth and they had actually closed off that they couldn't get there and they weren't happy. So it was sort of a... Uh, you, you don't want to get poop thrown at yeah, you. Yeah, you know, it was sort of... <laughs> Okay, they're gone. Get underneath the bridge. Charge. Yep. I really, I mean, I thought this was a really nice little extra fun cultural thing to do. And it wasn't very expensive. It was 180 pesos mm -hmm. per person, and that included everything. Um, Except for the, the workshop. Well, yeah, but, but I mean, that... Yeah. that I don't, I don't even see where the workshop was included when we did the tour. No, it's not. Um, the workshop, I think that's actually up at the very front area down at the end. I think that's what those young ladies were setting up down there. You can, um, you can add the workshop on. It, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pricey, but it's basically you're making chocolate. You're like in the kitchen making chocolate. And they probably do it for, it seems like groups. So, yeah, um, I think that's probably a lot for the tour buses and things like that. Yeah. Take a couple extra single pesos because feeding the, the fish at the very beginning mm -hmm. is a hoot because they actually have learned to follow people. And it's sort of like watching piranha feed. It's <laughs> wow. Little mouths going gone. Blah, 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 blah. So, Waiting for food. And then, of course, then when you leave, you have the little gift shop, which. Oh. I think this t-shirt was eight or nine dollars. Yeah, it was not very expensive. You know, the t-shirt was one of the lesser expensive things. Mm -hmm. The t-shirt cost less than chocolate did. And, and that was, mm -hmm. you know, then we went down uh, to Monty, had lunch and went home. So. so there you go. Choco story. You asked for it, you got it. <laughs> there it is. We're going to wrap this up. We are Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. Remember, we, we are, are doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. Other videos that you might want to check out. Hasta la próxima. Adios. <laughs>